Hey everybody, and welcome back to the channel HTM here with a brand new Stamina Necro Grind God build for the Flames of Ambition DLC. And this is a very fun and unique take on the Stam Necro build. You guys were combining the rarely used crossbow skill from the Fighters Guild with those skeletal bombs that the Necro class is known for, for some absolutely insane damage. Enemies die so quick on this build with nearly infinite sustain and a lot of speed making this ideal for grinding those champion points as quickly as possible. And it's just a blast to play. Literally a, a blast. Let's just start the video. All right, everybody, here we are back on the Stamina Necromancer with another unique Grind God build for the Flames of Ambition DLC. Uh, this is just a lot of fun to play, you guys. I think you're going to enjoy it. So let's jump right into the buff stats on this setup. Uh, all we need is a potion. Everything else is passive on this build, which is really nice. So with that, we're looking at about 13,000 max magicka, 21,000 max health, 31, 32,000 max stamina. And then check out our recoveries, you guys. On the Khajiit, they are pretty insane. 2K stam recovery. Uh, 2,600 health recovery. Weapon damage is looking good, uh, 6,200. Got some nice weapon critical going on as well, 68%. Now, in terms of our attributes, you will want 64 points into stamina, this being a stamina necro build. For the food, we're running the Lava Foot Soup. This is probably best in slot, this patch for stamina builds. In most cases, uh, you don't really need the health anymore, and this just gives you tons of max stamina. Plus, you saw how high we were able to get the stamina recovery. Uh, this is going to help a lot with that. Thief Mundus, we do want as much crit chance as possible on this build, so I think the Thief makes sense. Uh, I am a werewolf on this build, and that's really just to simplify our buffs on the stamina necro. Now, that is optional, and I'll show you some ways uh, around that. If you do not want to be a werewolf, you can still make it work. And then we got uh, passive, major savagery, major brutality. We'll talk about all that in a minute. Uh, in terms of potions, yeah, tri stat potions will be your best in slot for this build, um, especially with the race that we chose. We just get tons of recovery, and this is going to boost all of those across the board. Um, and of course, for the race, which we're talking about, that's going to be Khajiit, a very strong race this patch, uh, one of the strongest in the game at this point. You got tons of recoveries, as we see. Lunar Blessing, you get all of your stats, your max stats boosted as well on the Khajiit. And then 12% critical damage and critical healing that did get buffed a bit this patch as well. So, yeah, that is going to be very strong on any crit focus build. That's basically a, an extra, you know, Shadow Mundus that's just built into your racial passives. So it's very strong. Um... Anything though, since this is a this is a grind focused build, the race doesn't make a huge difference. Anything that you have, you can make work as well. Though ideally, something with stamina or weapon damage that's going to be your best bet. Now that covers all the basics. Let's talk about the gear next. So for the first five piece sets, we're going with the New Moon Acolyte set. Uh, if you guys know me, I do run this on a lot of damage focused builds. It just gives you tons of weapon damage, it gives you the offensive penetration, which equals even more damage and then you have a uh, crit chance as well now there is a negative penalty for running this you uh increase all of your ability costs by five percent but as you saw with how much recovery we have on this build it's really not going to be a big deal and uh, just the extra flat uh damage on this set that you don't have to buff is going to be really nice there's no proc chance there's nothing like that so it is a very nice overall set and you can uh run this on many many builds this patch very successfully it is crafted as well so fairly easy to uh, have somebody make this for you or purchase it from a guild trader now in terms of the pieces uh, i'm running dual wield on this setup kind of interesting because it is a ranged build but we are using dual wield daggers uh, for the extra crit chance we'll talk about this in the passive section but basically daggers give you a lot of crit chance for each one that you have slotted passively now in terms of the traits i do like nernhoned on the main hand dagger and then just precise on the offhand dagger. Nernhone's going to give us as much weapon damage as possible. And then precise is going to help bring up that uh, crit chance just a little bit more. Weapon damage enchant on the uh, main hand. Absorb stam on the offhand. 
And then to go along with our uh, weapons, just three pieces of jewelry, very easy. Now, Infuse will be ideal because we're running the weapon damage enchant on these, and you'll get a lot of extra weapon damage if you can use the Infused trait on your jewelry. That's just a little tip there. Now, the second five-piece set is really up to you, but something with a lot of crit chance is going to be ideal for this setup. So I went with Leviathan this time around. Leviathan is a very nice uh, crit-focused set. It's basically the stamina version of Mother Sorrow. So you get the max stam bonus and then all that nice weapon critical. Of course, this is a dungeon set, so it can take a bit of farming to get. But if you have a lot of stamina builds, uh, I would definitely recommend you pick it up just to have on hand. It's very good. If you don't have this, anything that has weapon critical, you know, Hunting's Rage, a crafted set, you could get that. I'll have more alternative sets listed in the written guide. Just check the link below if you want more information on those. So we've got the Leviathan boots, legs, hands, waist, and chest. It's a medium armor set, so they're all uh, stamina for the enchant there. And then going with a training trait on as many pieces as you can, that's if you want to use this purely for CP grinding, that's going to obviously maximize how much XP you're able to rake in on this build. And then for the last bit, the monster set, I'm actually using two separate monster pieces just to maximize my overall stats. Slime Craw, one of these will give you a good boost for crit chance. So you got one piece of the Slime Craw. I'm using the uh, medium helmet there and then... One piece of Veladreth for the shoulders. That gives me more weapon damage. Again, you want medium on everything that's going to give you the most uh, passive stats from your medium armor passives. So seven medium armor pieces and then as many training uh, traits as you can get. So that is the basic setup for the one bar build. We've got New Moon Acolyte, uh, Leviathan, and then Slime Crab mixed with Veladreth. Very simple setup. Let's go ahead and jump into the skills next on the one bar build. With builds like these, you guys, one skill bar is all you need. So it's really nice. We're only really using like two or three skills at the most too. So it's a pretty cool setup. Um, if you want to extend this further though, I will have a two bar uh, setup on the written guide. So don't forget to check that out if you're interested. Uh, but back to the one bar setup, Razor Caltrop is going to be our first ability. And that is from the Alliance War skill line under Assault. Uh, Razor Caltrops is good on this build. Uh, because it does AoE damage, it does a nice snare, meaning that anything that you don't instantly kill is going to be snared, so you'll have more time to finish it off. And it also gives us that nice major breach uh, debuff. So you saw in the basic setup, I'm not running the Lover Mundus. My penetration is not at the cap for Overland, but when you throw down a Caltrops, that'll basically debuff everything in the area, making them take max damage from everything. So this is going to be part of our rotation, just to you know, debuff everything, then they're going to explode uh, once we hit them with some damage. So very good skill there. Next up, of course, we've got Blast Bones from the Necromancer class skills. That's under Gravelord. Second ability, Blighted Blast Bones, going to be your stamina morph. Does a ton of damage if this crits. Just forget about it. Things are going to blow up. It does take about 2.5 seconds to fully uh, hit your target. So you're going to want to start off with this because there's a little delay there, right? So 2.5 seconds, you'll cast that and then cast your other abilities. They should all land about the same time and everything explodes. Uh, so that'll be the first skill in our rotation. Now let's talk about some passives. Uh, Camouflage Hunter, very nice skill for this type of build. This comes from the Fighter's Guild skill line right here, second to last ability. And this gives us some nice passive bonuses. We've got Major Savagery, first of all. So weapon critical, uh, that's about 12% bonus crit. Really good. Plus Minor Berserk, if we are attacking from an enemy side or from behind, that's an extra 5% damage on top of everything else we're doing. Plus this is passive. It's a passive buff. So you don't have to cast anything, which is really good. Uh, next up, we got Silver Shards, another Fighter's Guild ability. And this is where that crossbow damage comes into play that I talked about in the intro. This is literally the only, you know, crossbow uh, skill in the game. The Dawn Guard Vampire Hunter Crossbow Bolt deals about 10k damage. And if this thing crits, you're looking at 17, 18k uh, damage up front easily, which is more than half the health of most, uh, you know, content that you'll be grinding on this type of build. So... Uh, it does do AoE damage as well, which is the reason why I picked this over some other skills. There's no cap on this that I know of, so it's going to hit, you know, four or five enemies at a time as long as they're in range, as long as they're close enough to the initial target. Everything is going to take damage at once, though there is a, a little ramp down. You can see the, the nearby targets take 22% less damage. But again, if you're critting for, you know, 17, 18K, 
it's still going to be a lot of damage for every enemy in the area. So that's going to be our main bread and butter skill along with the Blast Bones. Obviously, Blast Bones plus a uh, Silver Shard crossbow, that's going to be enough to kill most enemies instantly. Uh, plus you have the extra debuff and dot from Caltrops. Now, our last normal skill is a uh, flexible skill here. Now, to make this as simple as possible, I went with Hercene's Fortitude. This is the werewolf skill that I was talking about earlier. Now, no, you do not cast this uh, when you're in your normal form. You cannot cast it, but the benefit here is you get passive major brutality, so that's that 20% weapon damage all the time, which we really want. Now, the other alternative to this is you could just run a weapon power potion, uh, but that's going to be expensive if you're grinding a lot of champion points on this build. You might want to save those for more regular content. So I thought, why not? Let's make it uh, just a passive buff. So that's a great way you can do it if you have access to Werewolf. Let me show you where that is. It's under World Skills, Werewolf, Hercene's Fortitude right there. Either morph will give you the passive major brutality. Now, a third option, we could use this. You could use Potion. Third option that's also very good is going to be uh, dual wield. One reason why it's good to run dual wield on this uh, build. And then Shrouded Daggers. So Shrouded Daggers doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Uh, you can see it's significantly less than the Silver Shards. But this does give us Major Brutality as well. So one thing you can do is replace this. Replace Hercene's Fortitude with Shrouded Daggers. And then all you do is you pop your Blast Bones, hit them with Daggers. That way you've procced that Major Brutality and then start uh, hitting them with Silver Shards. Blast Bones will hit. And it's pretty much the same thing. You just needed to cast one extra skill. So that would be the uh, non-Werewolf way to run this build. Just FYI, if you want to do it that way, it still works really well. And then for the ultimate... Any ultimate here is fine, but Gravelord uh, Pestilent Colossus is going to give us some nice passives. I'm actually not casting this. Um, you don't need it. This is just overkill, massive overkill damage. So you can actually get some good bonuses from this passively and through champion points, the uh, CP 2.0 stars. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a minute. But that is the one bar setup. Let me show you quickly how it works on a couple of enemies here. So again, the rotation is uh, very simple. Blast Bones, and then Lock Come Down and Caltrops, and then Fire a Crossbow. So here's the Blast Bones. Here's a Caltrops and a Crossbow. Boom. That's, uh, that's all you need. Here's one more. Boom. Let's do one more. And it's nice that it's ranged, right? So you don't even have to get close to enemies. Boom. If anything happens to survive that, which occasionally they will, then you just keep uh, keep spamming your crossbow at them. They'll never touch you. They can't touch you. They're snared, right? Oh, see the dot got them there at the very last second. If it doesn't crit, then you might need one more or the dot will uh, finish them off there. There you go. All right, so what else should we look at? Let's talk about passives. Uh, the passives are very good on the Necromancer. But this build is so simple, uh, we're not going to make use of all of them necessarily. Now, reusable parts is good. This will make that Blast Bones cost 50% less. Uh, Death Knell is useful also. So uh, this gives you extra crit chance when your enemies are under 25% health. So that extra um, last attack at the end. This is why I chose to slot Pestilent Colossus on the front bar ultimate, even though I'm not using it. You could get more weapon damage, honestly, if you slot the Fighter's Guild ultimate but this gives you 10% extra crit chance uh, when enemies are in execute range. So it's it's a nice passive. I would definitely use it on this build. Dismember, you get the extra penetration, which is good. And then Rapid Rot, that'll buff your Caltrops damage a little bit. So all of these are worth getting for sure. Uh, Bone Tyrant, we're not slotting this ability, so you can save some points here. Really the only passive from Bone Tyrant that you need on this setup is Last Gasp. 1250 max health is really good, so pick that up. And then Living Death, we won't be able to benefit through uh, most of these. We can save some points here. But then do what? Let's look at these. So one thing we mentioned was using daggers. Why do you want to use daggers? Well, you can see down here, each dagger increases your critical chance by 8 to 12. That's around a 4% increase. So like about 8%, I believe, for two daggers. It's a nice increase if you're running dual wield daggers. And we want as much crit chance on this ability as possible. That's why I think daggers make sense. 
I would get all of these, especially if you're going to end up running uh, Shrouded Daggers instead of the uh, Werewolf Medium Armor. Yes, you want all of these. These did change quite a bit this patch. For example, Agility now gives you weapon damage per piece of Medium Armor, so you'll want to run 7 Medium to get you the max amount of weapon damage, which is 14%. And you get some other good stuff here, increased crit chance, cost reduction, stamina recovery. All of those are very good. Fighter's Guild, we get some good passives here. We talked about the weapon damage, 6%. You could even make this 9% if you want to slot uh, Dawnbreaker in that case. Plus Banish the Wicked, we get three ultimate on every killed, not just undead killed anymore. It's all enemies. And then, of course, your racial skills. Make sure you pick up all of those. Alchemy medicinal use can be good. Uh, just to increase that potion duration as much as possible. Let's jump into champion points. Let me show you how this works. Now, I'm going to show you basically the ideal setup, basically like the soft cap in terms of how much damage this build can produce. That happens at around 1,100, 1,200 CP. If you have less CP, that's fine. It's still going to work really good. And I'll have different layouts over on the written guide, like 300, 600, 900 champion points. So if you're in a lower sort of rank with your uh, CP, Go check that out and see what the best stars are. But as far as what I have right now, let's go ahead and start with the green tree. Uh, so I always start with Steed's Blessing. Extra movement speed out of combat is good. 50 points there and then 50 points into Gilded Fingers. You're grinding uh, CP, so you might as well get as much gold as possible as well. That's going to increase your gold. So that'll put you at 100 green CP or 300 total CP. And then from there, I just kind of work... To the right side of the tree, Fortune's Favor, I'm just going to do one stage here. Wanderer, one stage here. Steadfast Enchantment, one stage here. And then this unlocks some nice slottable stars. So Treasure Hunter increases the quality of items you find in treasure chests. And then Rationer is really good, you guys. If you're using the Sigic uh, Ambrosia or Ethereal Ambrosia to grind your experience, it's going to make those last 30 minutes longer. So this is pretty much a must-have um, if you're buying those or you craft those. And then something extra, you can pick up uh, liquid efficiency that's going to give you a chance at not consuming your potion, which can be nice, especially if you have to use weapon power potions or something like that. In terms of the blue tree, this is where all our damage comes from, right? So you're going to start in precision. This gives you some extra crit chance, which is really good. So 40 points there is ideal. Then we're going to jump into extended might and pick up piercing. This gives us more offensive penetration. Now from there, I would jump into our main damage stars, which is going to be over in the hand on this side. Biting Aura, this increases our AoE damage. So that's your uh, Blast Bones, right? That's going to do 10% more damage. And then Deadly Aim will actually buff your uh, Silver Shards crossbow because that counts as a single target effect that then bounces to other enemies. So if you, you get the main hit to do more damage, those uh, bounced hits are going to do more as well. So 50 into deadly aim, that would be where I would start. Now, if you have more CP, uh, you can pick up fighting finesse, right? Critical damage is very strong on this build, the way we have it set up. We have such a high crit chance that uh, most of your damage will be critical strikes. And so fighting finesse is going to make those hit 10% harder. Great option there. And then the last slottable star I would recommend is just uh, either Untamed Aggression for the extra flat weapon damage, or you could do Wrathful Strikes, a little bit of extra damage, but that only applies to offensive abilities. Now, if you have any more CP stars beyond that, you can go back into Extended Might and buff some of your damage further. So Battle Mastery, this increases your martial status effect chance. And there is a new status effect, by the way, with physical damage. So that can proc from your crossbow. I believe that's a minor breach. And then Mighty, that's some extra weapon damage on all your offensive abilities. That's really good. And then the last one you'd want right here, Tireless Discipline, 1040 max stamina. That's good as well. Finally, let's talk about the Red Tree. Uh, I would start with some sustain on this build. So you can go into Sprinter. Just get the first stage here. First stage of Hasty. And then Heroes Vigor, you can do, you know, two, three, four stages here as much as you want for the extra health. But as soon as you put the first stage into Heroes Vigor, it unlocks your sustain passive, which is Bloody Renewal. 1,500 max down at any time you kill an enemy. This is very important when grinding CP, you guys. In addition to all the recovery we have on this build, we're getting tons of stamina sustain. So I would recommend picking that up first. Uh, once you have that, you can get more recovery from Rejuvenation. 50 points there can get some extra health, which is nice, boundless vitality. And then we talked about the passive ultimate. 
You don't need the ultimate on this build because it's so strong. So strategic reserve will give you about 1500 bonus health recovery when you're not using your ultimate. So when you're at 500 ultimate, you just have it sitting there. That's an extra 1500 health recovery. So you might've noticed I'm not running a heal on this build. This is why I have, you know, over 2k health recovery. I don't need a heal for most content. Of course, you can run a heal on the back bar very easily also if you want to. Now, if you have any extra CP beyond that, you I would just fill out these a little bit more so you can max out Sprinter for the sprint cost reduction, max out Hasty, you can sprint faster, make sure you get all your Heroes Vigor points, and then Tumbling, reduce the cost of Roll Dodge, and then Defiance, reduce the cost of Break Free. That's kind of the maxed out setup. In terms of the uh, outfit style, finally, if you're curious what this style is, most of these are Ancestral Reach. That's in the uh, Light Armor style. And then I've mixed that with the uh, Abba's Watch style, also in Light Armor. All right, everybody. And with that, that's going to wrap up our Grind God Stamina Necromancer build for the Flames of Ambition DLC. Hope you guys enjoyed this one or found it informative. And if you did, don't forget to crush that like button. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. If you want more information on the build, like those different CP breakdowns for 300, 600, 900, 1200 champion points or the two bar skill setup, make sure to check out the written guide. Link is in the description and the pinned comment down below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, let me know down in the comments section what type of grind god build you want to see next. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there and I will see you around in the next video.